Good morning, good morning, good morning. For truly this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in Him. Glory to God. God, we thank you for bringing us here on this morning. We thank you for waking us up, Lord God, allowing us to see a new day, Lord God. Thank you for breathing a breath of life into our nostrils, Lord God, giving us the activity and the mobility of our limbs, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we bind the spiritual wickedness in high places and want the activity in high places. The prince of Persia, the prince of politics, and the prince of darkness, and we cast it down to the bottom of the spit. We cancel every sum and every curse, hex, vex, and spell. In the name of Jesus, and we plead the blood of Jesus in the atmosphere on this morning. In the name of Jesus. We cancel every assignment of the enemy on this morning that's coming from the northeast, south, and west, the northwest, the southeast, and we send it back to the sender on this morning. We cancel every assignment of chaos and confusion, every spirit of distraction that's coming from the northeast, southwest, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, and the northeast, the southwest, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, and we send it back to the sender. We cancel every assignment of backlash, retaliation, and vindication, and we cast it down to the bottom of the pit, in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do on today, Lord God, how you're going to bless, Lord God, how you're going to move mightily on today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for signs, miracles, and wonders, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. God, God, I thank you right now, God, for every angelic angel that you've assigned to our life, God, that's managing our territory in the name of Jesus, fighting on our behalf in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you right now, God, as you're protecting the young people on this morning, as they get up on this morning, God, and make their way to school, God, make their way to the bus stop, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God, cover them with the blood in the name of Jesus, God. Cover them from hurt, harm, and danger from the snares and the tears and the wiles of the enemy on today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. God, and be with them on the school grounds, on the school bus, at the bus stop, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. God, while they walk into school, God, while they walk at home from school, God, be with the college students, Lord God, even those schools, God, that are taking field trips today, Lord God, divinely protect them, Lord God, while they're driving up and down the road, Lord God, and as they make it to their destination, Lord God, whatever trip they're going to, Lord God. Keep them safe. Keep them protected. In Jesus' name, as we seal this prayer with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Going to be reading John, the sixth chapter from the NIV Bible. Glory to God. John, the sixth chapter from the NIV Bible. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee. That is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked, this is this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small bar- barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There were was plenty of grass in the place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When he had all had enough to eat, when they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed about three For four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were fighting. 
But he said to them, it is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that only one boat had been there, and that Jesus had not entered it when his disciples with his disciples, but they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of him. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Barely I truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work your, for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do? To do the works God requires, Jesus answered, the works of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what signs, sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For well, the bread of God is the bread that comes down from the heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life for who, who's, whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty but as i told you you have seen me and still you do not believe all those the father gives me will come to me and whoever comes to me i will never drive away for i have come down from heaven not to do my will but to do the will of who of him who sent me and this is the will of him who sent me that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last days for my father. Father's will is that everyone who looks to the son and believes in him shall have eternal life. And I will raise them up at the last days. At this, the Jews there began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he know? How can he now say, I come down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them and I will raise them up at the last days. It is written in the prophets. They will be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which everyone, anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then Jesus began to argue sharply among themselves. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at their last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. 
Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that comes down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. <laughs> on hearing it, I'm reading John the 6th chapter from the NIV Bible. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he has before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. Well, Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, this is the way I told you that no one can come to me unless the father has enabled him. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Then Jesus replied, Have I not chosen you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, who though the one of the twelve was later be, to betray him. We just got finished reading John, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 71 from the NIV Bible. We thank God for the reading of his word. We praise God in the name of Jesus for his word and that we ask God on this morning to show us how to apply his word to our life. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We praise you. We give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus name, we say amen. Glory to God.